The deadly Ebola virus is spreading rapidly in Africa. It has so far infected two of the Americans who have gone there to fight it. And here's the problem for Americans. In the jet age, the spread of a dangerous illness like Ebola is no longer someone else's problem. In a world linked by air, a case of Ebola is only a plane ride away from coming to this country. So far, there have been over 1,000 confirmed cases. Over 600 patients have died. Public health officials here in the U.S. are moving fast and issuing warnings. It's where we begin tonight with our chief medical editor, Dr. Nancy Snyder. Because deadly viruses now have the potential to travel to any part of the world within 24 hours, today, U.S. health officials put out an alert asking American health care workers to be on the lookout for Ebola symptoms in people traveling back from West Africa. This outbreak highlights the need for us to enhance our efforts around global health security everywhere in the world. The alert comes after two American health workers contracted the Ebola virus in Liberia. Dr. Kent Brantley and Nancy Wrightbull were helping Ebola patients and are now fighting for their own lives. Dr. Brantley sent a message today through a colleague. Thank you for all of the prayers and messages of encouragement. I'm praying fervently that God would help me survive this disease. Brantley, seen here wearing his protective suit before he became ill, began complaining of fever and abdominal pains on Wednesday. Soon testing positive for Ebola, he was immediately isolated and started on IV fluids. The current outbreak started in West Africa's Guinea in March. Within days, the virus had spread to neighboring Liberia and Sierra Leone. And last week, for the first time, the virus traveled by plane when a Liberian citizen flew into Lagos, Nigeria, the largest city in Africa, via Togo. He died five days later, and the World Health Organization has sent teams to track down anyone who came into contact with him. We Skyped with Michael Stuhlman, who is on the front lines in Sierra Leone with Catholic Relief Services. They're typically under-resourced. Uh, they're working 10, 15, even 20-hour days. And in those conditions, it is possible for someone to slip up and become infected. Dr. William Fisher recently returned from Guinea and says there's a great distrust of aid workers. There is a growing fear that perhaps the, the physicians from international communities were bringing uh, the virus with them. Ebola spreads by bodily fluids and can take up to 21 days for symptoms to appear. The CDC emphasizes that once symptoms subside, people may no longer be contagious. The symptoms can be frustratingly vague, fever and headaches, diarrhea and vomiting, weakness and stomach pain, but at the end, kidney failure and then hemorrhage and death in many cases, Brian. And Nancy, because we're all linked by air, how long does it have to be until we see those warning signs at airports, maybe spot health checks at some of the big international airports? Well, the Centers for Disease Control today said they are watching this. They're talking to foreign governments. And right now, no alerts other than health care workers who are going to Western Africa. But a real reminder that this is the time, regardless of who you are, doctor and patient, when you see each other and one of you doesn't feel well, you must discuss where you've traveled. And in this case, at Western Africa has to be the top of everyone's list, Brian. All right, Dr. Nancy Snyderman starting us off tonight. Nancy, you thanks bet. as always.